Hello everyone, Nicole Stackline, Technical Agronomist for DeKalb Asgro in Northeast Iowa. This past week, my team and I have been looking at a ton of fields because we've been getting reports of loss of stand or plants that are coming up. They're V3, they looked great when they did stand counts, and now all of a sudden they're dying. So what we're finding when we go out to these fields is that we've got a lot of plants that are dying either from Pythium or Fusarium, and in 90% of the cases, probably both. We do have some samples that are being sent to the lab, but in almost all of these cases, they're gonna come back positive for both Pythium and Fusarium. And in most of these cases, it's gonna be about impossible to determine which one of these two pathogens showed up to the party. So the majority of the fields that we're getting called to that are having large problems is in that geography where you guys have just gotten rain after rain. It seems like you haven't missed a single event. So most of these fields are in that Fayette County, Bremer County, parts of Buchanan, Black Hawk County, kind of in this geography right here. And it really matches up with the rainfall maps. So by looking at all of these fields over the last week, our main priority is to establish different trends or what are our factors that are contributing to this. So the biggest factor that we're seeing is geography. In those counties, that's where we're finding it the most common. That's probably because of the weather pattern that you folks had. The other reason why that geography is being affected so much is because so much of that geography had so many fields planted in the most affected window. So the other trend that we're seeing is planting date. So if you planted corn in these geographies in mid-May, looking at that May 15th to May 19th through that window, that's the planting window that we're also seeing it more affected in. So I have a couple theories as to why that is. And it's a little bit confusing because in so many cases, we think about you know damping off, damp being wet and cold, right? We're saying we planted in mid-May. This stuff did not sit cold and wet. So why are we finding Pythium fusarium seedling diseases? Well, one of the things with Pythium in particular is that we don't necessarily need to be cold, although it's greatly associated with it because when you have cold temperatures, it's taking that seed longer to get to the surface, which means that we have a much wider infection issue. It doesn't have to be cold to become infected. What it really needs is just water. And one of my theories is, is especially that geography, you guys sat for two weeks without turning a single wheel. And what happens with Pythium, which is actually a water mold, is that when it sits saturated, it changes the way it does its reproduction. And it changes to a type of spore that loves to swim around. So as long as you have free water in that soil, and the longer it stays like that, the more of those types of spores are produced. So when we were sitting for two weeks, not doing anything because it was too wet to plant, that Pythium was just getting its, um, was just getting its motor rolling and ready to infect that plants when we did get planting in that window. And then you get big flushing rains afterwards and give it all the water that it needs to go from plant to plant to plant to plant. And all of a sudden you've got a pandemic on your hands. So as we go out there and do our scouting, basically what we want to figure out is what plants are going to live, what plants are going to die, and how many of those plants are diseased. And they're going to make it, but they're going to be on the struggle bus for a little bit. So we're going to be evaluating the seed roots, so those roots that are coming directly off of the seed. We're going to be looking at the mesocotyl, which is that part, that little tube between the seed and the crown, and then looking at the crown as well. Another thing that we're looking for is nodal root development. So if we get those nodal roots coming out and they're developing, they will be able to sustain the plant without using any more of the seed roots, the seed, or the mesocotyl. So right here, we've got a couple of plants. This first one, obviously, as you're walking by, you can see that he is dead. We have a brown mesocotyl, a brown nodal root system, a dead leaf and just one green leaf left. So he is dead and we can know that from the surface. This next plant here, we can tell that he is green still, but you could definitely tell from the surface that he's having some issues. So when we look below here, 
We can tell that that mesocotyl is a little bit discolored. You can definitely tell that the crown is dead and brown. You don't see any new roots growing out from it. And you can see some of the browning of those leaves there. So the crown on this guy is already out. He's not going to make it. This plant is dead, but he does not know it yet. So the seed has broken off already. That mesocotyl is a little bit brown, but most telling of all is above there. The crown is very brown, not seeing a whole lot of white tissue, and only getting a couple of nodal roots coming out of there. We probably won't get any new nodal roots coming out of him as well. So he's dead, but he doesn't know it, and he probably can't really tell it looking at the surface either. This guy here has a long road ahead of him but he's got a lot of green leaves there. You can tell here that he did have quite a bit of disease. That mesocotyl there is fully brown and dead. However, you can see that it has new, white, healthy, nodal roots growing out of that crown. So this guy here is probably gonna be stunted for a while because those nodal roots aren't fully function functioning quite yet, but he's probably going to make it eventually. He's made it this far. All right, this last plant here is what we want them to look like. So he's got all of his leaves. He's stretching out there. You can see that mesocotyl is nice and white. We have good development and good growth on those nodal roots. And we've got all of them there. All of those nodal roots are a nice white color. They're nice and healthy. This is one of those plants that looks healthy from above and below. Okay, so now that we have this information, we know what we're looking for, what do we do with it? So the number one reason that we need to be going out and looking for this is to determine if there's anything that's bad enough that needs to be replanted. Now, in most cases, you're probably not gonna find anything that justifies replant. It is June 9th, 10th, um, and we're gonna need a pretty significant stand loss to justify going out there and planting again. In most cases, you're probably just gonna find 10 to 20% throughout your field. Now there are going to be parts of fields that are going to be that 40 to 50 percent. The true question is going to be where would you start and where would you stop? In many cases, especially if you're between the tile lines and if you're finding that 50 to 60 percent stand loss, it might be worth your time to go out and find a smaller planter and go in and spike in some plants along those rows so you can get some ground cover and give you a little bit better weed control. However, in most of these cases, it's going to be where the water sits a little bit more or the where the water ran. And in a lot of these cases, it's not going to you're not going to be able to figure out how to go in there. And we're going to just have to kind of live with it. In most cases, field wide, it's going to be that 10 to 20 percent, maybe 30 percent. And the value in knowing that is knowing it when you get there with the combine, because if you, you don't, you can't manage what you don't know. So if you get out there and you don't know why is it not yielding well here, and you're trying to figure that out, now you know. And unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that we can do to manage this for the future unless you know how to manage Mother Nature. So that's all the great news that I have to share with you guys today. If you have any questions, please call, text, or email.